Okay, it's top of the hour. Welcome and good morning, everybody um, here in the States. If you're joining us overseas, good afternoon or good evening. Uh, my name is Tom Lewis, and welcome to our fourth edition of our 20 for 2020 webinars. Today's topic is going to be rig checks. Just to make sure, um, can you guys all, one, see my screen, and two, hear me okay? And if you can't, just send over a, a message over the questions to let me know. And we want to make sure our audio and video is good for today. All right, so we're going to run through these things. Quick introduction, um, an overview of our simple objective um, during each of these sessions. Um, those of you that um, this, and just for those of you that are customers, we open this up to potential customers. So I do do a, a quick background about emergency reporting. Um, it only takes a few minutes for those that are new to our family. A uh, quick overview on our system features, and then we'll get into the uh, meat and potatoes of the uh, presentation, um, our new rig checks. That's me, retired battalion chief. Uh, for those of you that don't know me or haven't participated in any of our webinars, uh, retired battalion chief and paramedic out of the Green Valley Fire District in Southern Arizona. I'm coming to you today from sunny and soon to be 80 degrees Tucson, Arizona. And you can see some of my other credentials there. I had a, just a very blessed fire career and uh, joined emergency reporting uh, back in 2011 part-time, retired in 2013 from my fire service job, and just uh, was promoted last year to a business development analyst and kind of a key account manager as well. All right, here's our objective. Um, those of you that have attended either our summer boot camp or these 20 for 20, uh, 20 for 2020 seminars, uh, we try to keep it very simple and focused. So today, the topic is going to be how do I improve my daily, weekly, monthly, or however, whatever time period you have set for your various vehicles, apparatus inspections, using emergency reporting's rig checks. And so I'm going to show you how to set that all up, how it works, and then the reports you can extract from it. So a little bit about emergency reporting, and this is some kind of GWIS statistics and some fun stuff, even for those of you that are customers and have been using us for a while. We have over 6,700 departments, 36 million incident reports filed at least, uh, and then there are nearly a half a million personnel in our system. And so that doesn't mean all of them have logins necessarily, it depends on the agency, but that's the number of individuals we have in our active accounts. You can see some of our, our, uh, our core values include be, uh, and kind of a mission statement, so to speak, is um, compliance, operations, relationships, and data. And so when we talk about compliance, we mean the ability to comply to national, local, and uh, laws and standards like NFPA standards, and then regulations for your agency or jurisdiction. Um, successfully um, integrating operations and the ability to, the, the orange and the blue there go together, operations and data. And a lot of my passion is uh, helping those in the operations area realize and understand the importance of the data that they're entering. Because oftentimes, you know, this was a particularly good example today, rig checks. The, the value of what they're putting in isn't just simply a checklist. There's some a lot of back end value to the organization as well. And then um, again, a key part of who we are is building relationships both with our customers as well as with our partners that um, have products that uh, use the API to integrate with emergency reporting and then also um, within the broader fire service community. We have 16 modules of which many of you have taken a good advantage of. Now, one of the things I notice when I work with our customers, both in our key accounts, uh, as well as longtime customers or smaller agencies like mine was, you know, the four, one to five station department, I come from a uh, four station department running about 10,000 calls a year. And they don't always take advantage of everything the system has to offer. So that's why we offer these educational webinars uh, throughout the year to kind of help ramp up your knowledge so you can discover new parts of the system that heretofore you may not have been taking advantage of. I was just working with a customer earlier this morning in the training module and he learned how to create groupings 
in the reports module for the drop-down list, uh, like for training codes. He didn't know that you could group them into a grouped category that you just click once instead of having to pick them each time. Um, if there's a dozen of them, you can now just click once and all those dozen training codes will appear. So little things like that help take your level of the system uh, to a new, to uh, your knowledge of the system to a new level. So we have a lot of partner interfaces via our API. Um, many of you have taken advantage of them. For example, we have uh, First Do with um, occupancy data, pulling occupancy data into their program from our system. We have many scheduling partners that if you need a complex um, scheduling solution, that what you do in their program will populate into our daily roster. And then of course, um, while it's not a direct using our APIs per se, all of you that uh, have a CAD, can certainly use our web services direct or a flat file parser process to push data into the incidents module from your CAD, and that is uh, widely used uh, within our uh, customer base. Over 600 system reports that help you comply with 1710, 1720, as well as NFPA 1500 um, with our NFPA 1500 safety analytics uh, pump panel, we call it. It's a data visualization tool to measure how well your department is adhering to NFPA 1500. So we have a, a quite a, a rich set of products um, that, again, many of our customers just gradually get up there and realize, wow, I haven't taken advantage of this part of the system. And, and, and I imagine many of you are in that position as well. All right. I love this quote. Um, those of you who have been with me on other webinars know that I um, look to Alan Brunacini as a role model. Um, definitely miss him. We were blessed to have him speak at our 2017 National Training Academy in Bellingham, Washington. But here's a quote attributed to him that I've seen, and I think that's a good way to set the tone and the stage for what we're going to cover today. Fire trucks are godlike vehicles that should always be maintained as a labor of love, personal and professional so that they can protect good and fight evil. He had a way of saying things, no doubt about it. So uh, I also like to tie in uh, national standard, usually NFPA, sometimes SIPSI accreditation. Uh, but today, the particular standard that Rick checks really ties in closely to is NFPA 1911. And this is the standard for the inspection, maintenance, testing, and retirement of in-service emergency vehicles. Our focus is going to be on the inspection part and somewhat uh, the testing part as, as well. So if you have not looked at a document, NFPA documents, and I know there's no pictures. All of us firefighters, you know, we're used to training visually with a lot of things, so it's all text. Okay, I joke because I was a firefighter and it took me years to get into these NFPA standards, but I promise you, this is not time wasted. So even if you have not sat down with some of these standards, it would behoove you, especially if you're responsible uh, for not just checking a truck, but if you're responsible for fleet management, that NFPA 1911 is a fantastic standard. And if you're trying to build a new program using say emergency reporting's rig checks to supplement an enhanced fleet management program, this is your go-to document. And I just grabbed a page out of chapter seven that talks about the daily weekly uh, visual and operational checks. And so you can kind of cross check your current truck check forms to the list that they have here. And there's another one on the page following this that also has um, additional um, areas of the vehicle that should be checked. And so this can help build a very comprehensive truck check form for you. And that's one of the things we're gonna do today with rig checks. All right, so let's jump into it. But before we do, I have two quick poll questions I wanna ask all of you. First of all, what type of agency do you work for? So you'll see that up on your screen. If you're multitasking, look up real quick. And if you wouldn't mind answering this question for me, what agency do you work for? We just wanna see if we've, who we've got on, on board with us today. All right, almost everybody has voted. I'm gonna close it in three, two, one, last chance to vote. All right, everybody voted on that one. Let's see what we've got. All right, so it's split pretty evenly there with career and combo, and then we've got our volunteers uh, in there as well. No federal representation on this one today. Okay, last question. And this is just to help us to see who's on board with us today. Again, like the first question, are you currently a ER customer or are you a prospect interested in becoming part of the emergency reporting family? And closing that one in three, two, one, last chance. Awesome. 
Everybody voted on that one. Okay, so we've got a couple that are uh, a prospect and others are our customers, which is par for the course. So thank you for joining us today. All right, let's get into this. Okay, so what you should be seeing is the welcome page. Yep, looks like it's good. And what we're going to focus on, of course, is just rig checks today. And to get there, you will click on the maintenance module. And if you're, those of you that are customers, feel free to follow along if you have the luxury of having two screens or can split your existing screen. And then from here, we go to rig check. Now, there's some assumptions being made during today's presentation is that you have already built your apparatus list in the administration module. And when you do and click on the rig check, you will see our new user interface design. So. You'll notice throughout the system, I'm sure you all have, that depending on the page or the module you're in, it's got a little different look. What you're seeing here is what our system is moving towards, a cleaner, leaner uh, look, more white space, uh, easier to navigate. And so there's gonna be a hodgepodge of the old and the new for, for a little while as we work through the various modules. But I can tell you that incidents is on its way um, for a rewrite this year in 20, or next year in 2020. and Releasing today, later this afternoon, the occupancy module is going to have a whole new look. So definitely take a look at that and let us know some feedback on it. A couple things here. You can use this filter to specifically look for a, a certain unit. You can also search by vehicle number. And so there's, there's a key difference between the apparatus ID, engine one, and the vehicle number. So if you'll indulge me for just a second here, I'm gonna go down. And if you're on a different browser, you won't have the little goofy stuff that's happening here on a Mac. For me, they know this, the, the footer doesn't stay at the footer. That's just a little bug in the code um, when Safari, the Safari browser decodes it. So let me do this real quick and show you a key difference. And again, I know this may be rudimentary for some of you, but I wanna just reemphasize it because of its importance. Okay, so in admin, you've got the apparatus list. All right, a couple key things I want you to know here. We're gonna to go to engine one. The apparatus ID is the unit's call sign. This is limited to five characters per enfers. This is the field that is used to, that is a drop down when you're running an incident report or is the primary field in the maintenance module. The other key thing to keep in mind is the vehicle number, the second one down here. This is your shop number, your asset management number. This one stays the same from the time you take delivery of the vehicle to the time you dispose of it. it I would argue it should be required, but because Nemesis or Enfers doesn't require it, we don't make it required, but I think it should be. And so if in your apparatus list, you just have the ID, but not the vehicle number, um, find out what that shop number, asset management number is, whether it's the last four of the VIN, last five of the VIN, or some other track and number, and make sure you put that in, in there because this comes into play in rig checks, and I'll explain why in just a minute. The other thing, just a gee whiz to let you all know, down here under apparatus ownership, many of you rely on neighboring agencies to help with your standards of cover, your response criteria, um, uh, for ensuring you have the right number of trucks and personnel for your incidents. But you don't manage those vehicles. So if you don't want that vehicle to appear in the maintenance module or in rig checks, select this not department unit. It'll still appear in the incidents module and will appear in other reports where there's drop downs for apparatus, especially when you're trying to determine units on scene and things like that. But if it's not owned by you, and you don't want it in the maintenance module or on your rig checklist, just click not department unit and that cleans it all up. Okay, any questions on this page? This is the foundation that you've got to have good apparatus information in here so you can take full advantage of rig checks. Okay, no questions, great. All right, let's jump right back into rig checks. So the reason I mentioned the difference between the apparatus ID, which is engine one, and the vehicle number is the following. And I'm going into the weeds just a little bit here, but I think you should know this because this is a question that comes up a lot when we talk about this. When your people go to check a truck, 
If it's the frontline truck, engine one is normally vehicle 9990, then you're good to go. But if you're in a switch out, teach them to search by the vehicle number, the asset management number of that vehicle. That way, no matter what the call sign is, you're always checking the correct vehicle. In maintenance, it is, you're checking it by, and your the primary search is by its apparatus ID. Now I realize that this may be engine one today, okay, and is permanently and normally engine one. But if I'm in a switch out, and let's say engine three is running as engine one, you don't need to go in and play around an admin and make changes because then you forget to change it back, you know, the apparatus ID. Just search by this vehicle number and the person will be checking the right vehicle, especially if say engine three today is switched out and running as engine one. And I hope that makes sense to you. Certainly ask questions if you need clarity on that, but to make sure you're checking the right physical vehicle can always verify here with the vehicle number. Okay, cool. So with that, in order to even do, whoops, you know what, let's do this. That's I wanted to go through these filters. So again, you can filter, this is one search field that you can search by your name, vehicle ID, station, or vehicle number. So if I type in one, anything that has one in the field, whether it's the station, the vehicle, or its asset management number will appear in, in the search results. The more you type, the more results, the more, the more narrow the results will become, okay? And it, it automatically updates the view as you type. And so that will become a feature in a lot of our search fields as opposed to having hit enter every time. The other two filters I wanted to talk about before we press on is you can then see one or more uh, stations worth of vehicles, or I just wanna see this current station I'm assigned to. And this is based on, again, back here on the welcome page, Whatever station shows up here, that's the station you're currently at. And remember, if you move around, and a lot of departments have movement of personnel based on staffing needs, make sure you change that to reflect your current station so you have the correct logbook entries. And for the filter here, it'll update what your current station is, and then you can just see the trucks at that current station. I also have these additional filters that will show me in and out of service vehicles, or just I just wanna see in-service vehicles. And if I want to see anything that has an incomplete truck check, I can see that as well, or just those that are assigned to my station. So take advantage and teach your guys uh, these filters, and that'll clean up this list, especially those of you that have a, a pretty large fleet. Okay, now we'll go down to, I'm going to use the uh, Enfers type so it's organized just like the maintenance module it's organized by Enfers vehicle type and so the Enfers code for engine is 11. so these are my engines but remember i'm using filters here so i'm only seeing my current station and in and out of service vehicles okay so i've expanded the engine section and the station only has one engine now it says start a check. Notice the difference here. Engine one is in blue. Tender one or truck one is in black. That means that there's apparatus and you'll see when I mouse over it, this apparatus does not have any checklists. So in order to build one, I've got to click this edit. So I'm gonna start up here at one that's already created so you can see the beginnings of a, of a rig check, a rig check form. I click the edit icon, and you can see right now there is just one checklist assigned to this vehicle. It's engine check form. But I need to make some edits to it. You can also start a new one from scratch. We'll just edit this one, and I'll show you what I've started so far. You've got, when you, when you open this, you're gonna see a lot of buttons and a lot of text up here. This is, these are called breadcrumbs. So if I need to go back to the vehicle, I can click that breadcrumb, or if I can go back to the main page of apparatus, I can click the apparatus breadcrumb and it takes me right back home to my main page. Done and publish. So you can we'll be working on one, click done for now and go back to it later. And then once you click publish, it's ready to be used 
as a as a truck check form, rig check form. You probably are wondering, ER rig checks, truck check, what's the difference? So this is our homegrown ER rig checks. It's a very robust, very snappy. This is our initial truck check solution that we partnered with Halligan on. You may have both of those buttons. Um, we can keep them both on for you. We can turn one off if you're gonna use one or the other, it's up to you. Um, but I'll probably mix it up during the, the training today. Um, rig checks in our nomenclature is uh, the ER rig check, what you're seeing here, and truck check is the truck checks done with our partners, uh, partner Halligan. Okay, so you've got the draft when it was last autosaved, when it was published. You can even delete the draft and then you can preview what it looks like. And I'll do that after we go through and uh, make some changes. Checklist title, the description. So like right now, we'll do an update for today. Okay, then down here under meter readings, you can include all or just some of these questions. I'm choosing to include all of them, but if you don't capture pump hours each day or when you check the vehicle, you can uncheck that, and then that question will not appear on the rig check form. These are the three fields you can enter for meter readings. Then from here, you begin to build your list. So I've started already to build the section of my rig check form for the cab. Now, a recommendation I have to you, and I know I don't have this as a poll question, but some of you may be do, still doing rig checks via paper. Some may be using another electronic system. Some of you may also be doing kind of a combination where you do it in paper and then come log it in, you know, Excel or a, a, a homegrown database. Um, so this allows you to just do it all in one spot and do it from your phone, which I'll show you in a minute um, how it looks doing it from a phone. Ah, so a couple questions, awesome. So, um, Kervin's asking, can aerial hours be added? So what I need you to do, um, I'll keep these questions in here. I will talk with the product owner. So this is version one, which means it's essentially the initial release of it. And so as we get more feedback from what other customers need, we share that with what's called our product owner. Think of it as a project, think of him or her as a product manager who oversees the developers building this part of our system. And so these are the things that we like to hear. So aerial hours, excellent. And then uh, Jason was asking, can we add other meter readings like fuel level, generator hours, things like that from Brian and Steve. So this is great. So these, this, your questions will be part of a report that our team sees, and I'll make sure that gets passed on to the product owner so that um, we can consider it for future development. This, this is fantastic. So pump hours we have, uh, Steve, right here. So we're good to go on that one, but generator hours we don't. So there are ways to enter all of this, even if we don't have it as a separate meter reading. So I'll talk about that here momentarily. So this is my compartment cab, compartment title, enable bulk pass. So here's the recommendation here. If you click yes, we're firefighters, we will take the path of least resistance. We will check a box, bulk fill, and it will check everything to pass or check everything, oh, bulk pass, yes, not fail, bulk pass. If you click no, it forces them to go into each item and select the pass fail. Typically it's preferable, but we give you the option to do a bulk pass. You can add a photo of that cab, and this is especially important for like high side compartments and other compartments outside on the vehicle, because with having a picture of it, you can kind of see at a glance what that compartment should be looking like. And that always comes in pretty handy when you're doing a, doing a check of a compartment. So it gives you that visual cross-reference. Now we're into the individual questions, and I'll show you how to build this, all of this here in a second, but this is how it's established. Cab lights, I like to put in a description, interior cab. Okay, seat belts, SCBA. So what we've been doing, and there's a couple ways to do this, is you can add I, I personally like going with each individual pack, and then you can do the SCBA, engineer driver operator seat, uh, and then of course any description. Now we're gonna add a question. So now I wanna make sure it gives me number four. New question's going to be SCBA officer. 
okay? SCBA, Firefighter 1, and then SCBA Firefighter 2. Again, assuming a four-person configuration here. Now, one thing we get asked a lot, and you'll probably think of this as we go through this, is, well, I want to do a more comprehensive check to capture more information about a particular pack, say, on the weekly checks. So right now in version one, the way I would do it is I would create a compartment. And again, this is a placeholder nomenclature here, uh, a compartment category or compartment for, excuse me, a compartment for a particular SCBA and then have questions specific for that weekly check to that SCBA. And I'll show you how that looks in just a moment. All right, so now my, my cab, for example, is complete. And then now we're in the right rear lower compartment. Okay, and so this is what I wanted to show you. If you needed to, at the end of the form, you could create a compartment for a specific piece of equipment, say the SCBA number one captain seat. Now, if I did this right, oops, I didn't want to move it up. This is, I'll, I was going to get to that in a minute. All right, so we're gonna expand it, okay? And this is really should be 1-1 officer, so it matches what I listed above. And then if you do a weekly where you put in the serial number, cylinder pressure, mainline valve functioning, pass alarm triggers, and so forth, that is your way of getting an explicit list for a particular piece of equipment that will still be embedded within the rig check. And then you could just have this particular section in the weekly check form not or the Friday check form or whichever day of the week that you're doing this. And so it's not going to be something they have to fill out on the day-to-day -day form. All right, so function, functionally, I can duplicate this. So if I need to do the same thing for the same piece of equipment, I duplicate it. I scroll down, I should have it again, but this time it's going to be SCB number two, dash, whoops, two dash one. And we'll call this one engineer and again it's that's it just basically cloned it i can reorder them by using the move up and move down when this is disabled it means i'm at the bottom if this is disabled that means i'm at the top of the list i can delete it and i just duplicated it as you guys saw all right so let's pretend we're happy with this form this is certainly an incomplete form you can add more compartments down here but my recommendation if you're transitioning if you're transitioning from paper to electronic truck checks, rig checks, one key reminder, build the form based on their existing paper form. You'll get a little better buy-in, the workflow will be similar, and then make the modifications as they become comfortable using the new electronic format versus the paper. We did that in my department and it kind of eased in kind of eased it in for the new engineers. And if you're a larger organization, oh, another tip is beta test it at one station. Get feedback from a core group of, of engineers or people that are checking the trucks each day at one station, and then they can help give you feedback to when you roll it out to your entire department. And so just some tips for implementing this, because in the fire service, um, we really embrace change. We love it all the time. and can't wait for the next new thing. No, that that's not us. So, but the good news is, is you'll get two things. Why are we changing? Why are we going to this? And then once they start using it, why didn't we do this five years ago? And so um, that's the benefit of a cool feature like this. You might get a little resistance on the front end, but once they start using it, they're going to see how easy this is and wait till I do an actual check from my phone. All right, so we're done. Okay, now one of the things that I need to do is publish it so it's ready for use so now when i use that form it will be have all my updates in it okay but the last thing i want to do is say this form is the same form you're going to use for all your engines that's why i titled it engine check form this duplicate and assign allows me to do this so now this form i'm going to apply to engine four and so now that form I created for engine one is now usable for engine four. Okay, oops. Okay, new. 
So if I'm going to create a new checklist, okay, I can begin creating that, that new checklist, okay? And this is what it looks like fresh. It's going to prompt you for the details, meter readings, whether you want them to be part of the form, brand new compartment, and one question to start off with. So I just wanted to show you um, what it looks like when you build it fresh. All right, we'll go. We'll follow the breadcrumbs back out to apparatus, and we'll take a quick pause. Um, any questions? So, Curvin uh, asks, is the equipment linking function still on the horizon? I believe that is part of something they're looking at for a future release, Curvin. I do not have an ETA on when that is to be developed. And what Curvin's asking about is that we're, we've got this linked to our apparatus in the maintenance module, then the ability to add equipment to compartments that are in your maintenance module as well. So it also uh, completes uh, a particular uh, check for an equipment, that a piece of equipment that's in your maintenance module. So linked, linked back to that master list of equipment, like we're linking back to the apparatus here for the overall rig checks. And then Jason asked, will there be more options for checklist other than pass fail? Um, that is also something being considered by the product uh, product owner as well, Jason. So again, this feedback is fantastic because it'll help us drive and prioritize because there's a lot of competing development, uh, development uh, projects going on. And so this helps us refine what the customers, what you the customers really want um, and allows us to prioritize our limited development resources um, to get the things that are the most meaningful to you. Drag and drop. Oh, Michael, you're hitting it near and dear to me because there's one other part of our system that I am passionate about for drag and drop, and that is the daily roster. So I will share that with the, uh, with the product manager on this one, the product owner on it as well. Um, dragging and dropping versus the up and down. And I imagine based on the new user interface, there was probably something that precluded them from doing that right out of the gate. So I'll, we'll, uh, we'll pass that along for sure. So great stuff. Yes, when we get to the truck checklist or the rig check, uh, uh, Brian, uh, you will be able to see um, how a firefighter or someone checking the vehicle can add notes and, and in addition to just pass fail. So we'll do that in a little bit and actually real soon. Okay. Now, I'm gonna go through the workflow right now on doing a rig check. But what I'm gonna do is I wanna, I taught you how to set this up in the web, okay? On a computer, desktop, laptop, or whatever. But I'm actually going to do this on my phone because this is a part of our system we have designed and kind of where we're going, to, going towards that um, it's called adaptive design and it works perfectly on our phones. So give me a second to do this and I'll get that squared away. I just have to link my phone. And so now you guys, as I change my screen, stand by. So you're going to see a little flicker because I've got to switch over to my other screen. Okay, so I'm mirroring to my phone and we're going to do the check on the phone. So what I taught everybody is create a shortcut on your desktop, on your device, mobile device. So down here, I've got a link both to Fuel ER and to Rig Checks. So all I did was I logged in to ER initially and then saved it once I was on the main rig check page, which you just saw. So let me log in. And it, instead of navigating through the maintenance module to get there, it immediately takes me to the rig check page. So, so we've got the rig checks, the same search and filters here. Okay, so I want to go to engine one. Now, if I've already set my filters, it will just show my station and the other filters I've set. But I want to look for a particular vehicle. So now I'm looking for engine one. We're going to start the rig check right now. So that's the form I want to use. You can see at the bottom, if I had more than one form, I would need to choose the form and now begins the rig check. 
Now I've got notes in here. That's just for me, like I did today, updated you know, for 2020, uh, 2020 webinar. So I'm gonna put in the odometer reading. Engine hours, pump hours. Okay. Then as I go through it, through the check, now remember I used those arrows and I moved this one up. So right rear lower is on the top, which it shouldn't be. So I know, oh, I gotta go edit that form, but that's okay. I'm gonna tap pass. I'm gonna put in the notes. Hydraulic fluid. I can add a file, so if I want to, I can take a picture. A picture of my keyboard. Use photo, and the nice thing about it is that photo didn't load up on the device. Okay, the way iOS, and I believe Android's the same way, you guys that are on Android can confirm it. That photo, if I went to my photos, it would not be there. It just takes it, loads it, and that's it, you're done. And that's how we like it because we, we don't want it cluttering up our, our photo uh, folder on our device. And then I press on, okay, lights pass, 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 okay. Now let's say here on that particular SCV cylinder, we got the serial number, we're on our weekly check. Pressure has failed. And this never happens, right? Well, A shifters do this all the time to us, right? Pack found at, whoops, at 3000 PSI. Never happens, right? Okay, so here's another thing I wanna show you. Let's see if I can get it to do it. If you're on your device, if you wanna do it faster, say the main line wasn't functioning, I can go in here. I can okay. I make sure my audio is still working here. Yes, and so I can talk it in. Done. Everything else passes. Pass. And again, I'm working through this on my phone. And again, I'm going to go through this quickly because the rest of it is just making sure I can show you how this functions. And then we're done. We're going to click submit. So watch what happens when we click submit. There are two unanswered questions. Please answer all questions before submitting the rig check. You cannot submit it until you answer all the questions. So let's find out where I goofed. Fails there. Aha, there's one. I went through it too fast. And there's the other one. Now I can submit it. And so rig check is submitted. And so that's it. Um, that's as that's as beautiful as I can show it. It just works great on a on a mobile device. And in fact, when I'm teaching people how to do rig checks in our system, I don't even show them on the web page. I show or show them on a larger form factor web page in the web, you know, via the web on a larger device. I'm on the web here on my phone, uh, so I'm I'm in my emergency reporting account. But because this page was designed to adapt to the form factor you're using, in this case an iPhone, it rescales and makes it very, very usable. All right, so that's done. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to the other screen and I wanna show you what's taken place after I did all this. But before I do that, I hear some questions coming on. So get back to the main screen. You guys can see that. And I wanna answer these questions uh, real fast. Ooh, a lot of them during that one. Okay, so um, to Brian, you can see how the firefighter can add comments, good. Um, the assigned PPE function, uh, that um, is, so that's a little bit outside the scope of the rig check per se, but what, um, what I did, Kervin, was essentially in the rig check, created a separate compartment for a specific piece of equipment so that I can do a more comprehensive check, say weekly or monthly on it. Can't, oh, so Orion's right on top of it. Once a checklist is built, can it be printed for reference? Well, that that's coming up here in just a minute. Can the existing truck checks that you built in Halligan be imported? That one, I wish I could say yes, we could just basically migrate them over, but they do have to be rebuilt in our rig check. Will an app ever be created? So. 
I don't know if we'll ever do an app, but what I hope we do, and you can kind of, you're kind of doing it. What I just did now is um, it's like our Fuel ER. Um, if you have not familiar with that, Fuel ER is a single purpose web app. It's not a downloadable app that you get from an app store, but it is a website that you go to uh, where you can then just log into your ER account and document fuel usage um, when you fill up a truck. Uh, right at the pumps. And it works very similar to what I just did with the rig checks. And the nice thing about it is, once you show them how to do that quick link, it kind of functions like an app. So you just tap once, put your login and password, and it takes you right to the rig check page. So I wouldn't expect there be a standalone app coming anytime soon because of how easy it is to use it on a mobile device and how we designed that particular page. In fact, more of our pages will be designed like that. Another good suggestion, are there quick links to jump to a compartment from the top rather than having to scroll through? No, but I will share that with um, the product owner, Brian. That's a good one. Uh, signing members to a rig check. So you want to be able to assign them and send them emails to check their um, check their rigs. Uh, kind of, sort of, but it's not automated. Um, I can show you that time permitting, uh, Jacob. So here's one from Doug he wants to share with the group. This is less of a question and more of an idea for our other customers. We'll be making lists for our drug boxes and our ALS engines for individual checks on those as well as the trucks themselves. So he's gonna combine them both. Uh, and so again, you make one ch rig check um, and even if you have a specific list that you build for a drug box, you can then use them and migrate that by assigning that list to another apparatus, so great. Pros and cons for, uh, for rig check versus truck check. So Brian, on that one, um, in a nutshell, I'm gonna I'm I like them both. I'm partial to ours because I like how it flows. Um, it does not. I'll be straight straight up with everybody. It does not have some of the functionality that the rig truck check does that Halligan has. And certainly, if you have Halligan Pro, it has a lot more features. But um, if I were to choose between ER rig checks and truck check and just staying with truck check basic, I'd go with rig checks, knowing that we're gonna be building more here and doing more things with it. I just like the flow. Again, I'm biased a little bit, but again, I'm trying to come at it from um, field perspective. And I'm a big fan of what our developers have done here. I think it's this for a first release, this is fantastic. And it's got a lot of good things, uh, good things ahead of it. All right, so I remember, let's, great questions gonna come come full circle here I just finished that check so a couple things from the rig check page that I can do one view history it is going to take me to engine one this is the complete history including all of its repairs it's cleaning anything that you've done and the and all the rig checks that have taken place I can click into it by clicking edit okay this is the icon here on the right click on it and it auto fills the completed section or who requested it when it was completed. But to answer uh, the Orion's question about printability, here's a printable view of what that what that rig check I just did. There's the thumbnail of the image I took and the rest of the form. Okay. So that, and I closed the wrong one. Of course I did, but that's okay because this is where I was gonna go anyway. So I'm gonna refresh this page. The other thing it does when you complete a rig check is it gives you this. Automatically populates into the daybook, the start and stop time, the default activity code, which you have to set, and I'll show you how to set that. So I have a default activity code called rig check. Now one advantage I can tell you between how again the rig truck check and the rig check. Again, rig is ER, so R E R rig check um, versus the truck check is that you have a separate activity code for the day book for rig check and a separate one for completed maintenance. With with the Halligan interface, it's all completed maintenance. So you have one with ours, one for rig check, one for completed maintenance. So two independent activity codes. And so it tells me the details, the form I used, the vehicle I checked, who did it, and any failed questions with the notes that I put in. 
And then of course I can run reports against this, not only in the maintenance module for that particular vehicle, but also um, I can see who's checked vehicles throughout the year by running reports against the daybook. The one key takeaway in order for this to work right, guys, is right here. You'll need to create a activity code called, I called it rig check and rig check completed. So that's step one in the admin module. Step two under the daily log settings is to create a default, select, excuse me, not create, a default activity code for rig check. So pick the one, you'll have the whole list of your activity codes, pick the one that you want to auto complete when you complete a rig check, and then you're good to go. And what that function I just showed you will work every time. And keep in mind too, the good thing about it is, it will reflect the station that the person's at. So if they're checking engine two at station two, it's gonna be in their logbook. If you are an officer and need to see your entire organization, you can select which stations you can see in your main view of the logbook. I've selected everything, but if I just want it, well, it won't make a difference because there's just one activity here. But if I just want my station, I would just check station one. But I'm a battalion chief, I wanna see my whole battalion. I click save and I can see that. Or if I'm the chief, I wanna see the entire department. So keep that in mind too, as far as what you view. Ah, Brian Michael, you are spot on on this question. I knew I would forget something. So, admin, what the question is, is what are the permissions needed to do a rig check? And I took for granted for that on that one. So we're gonna look at that. Administrators, keep an eye out on this right here. All right, so I'm just gonna go in here into permissions. I'm going to edit the permissions. I am going to the maintenance module and I'm going to expand it. As I scroll down, I have full access. Now, chances are you are not gonna give full access to everybody that's gonna do a rig check. So here's what they need to have. All right, so I'm gonna take away a bunch of stuff here. I'm gonna take away everything and show you what the minimum is that they need to have to perform a rig check. They need to, it needs to look like that in order to perform a rig check. It's how the code is on the back end. And so those four buttons need to be these, uh, yeah, five buttons need to be live. Actually, let me turn this one off. Perform rig check. Let's make it so I get it exactly right. So yeah, that's what your, if you just want them to be able to do rig checks and assign schedule maintenance, complete maintenance and view maintenance history, in order to do rig checks, they have to have all of this functionality. Great, great question. Thank you for that. I dove right into the rig check without going over the settings. So does that make sense to everybody? So take a look if you need to grab a screenshot. But what will happen is if you take everything away and then click perform rig check, it will automatically move these over because there's dependencies in the, in the permission settings here. And then of course you can add or take away others, but this is the bare minimum. So Robert, the request maintenance, that, that, is a top, that will be a topic for another uh, webinar on the maintenance module, but in a nutshell, uh, you can click request maintenance and send an email out for a particular piece of equipment, send an email out to, to uh, multiple personnel or, excuse me, or even a vendor to be able to uh, be notified about uh, something that needs work on, on a vehicle. So just, if you want to, go ahead and play with it, you'll see. Pick a piece of equipment or apparatus, request maintenance, say, you know, pick something, uh, you know, needs, uh, needs a new headlight. And then uh, click submit and you'll see that you can send emails out. Is there any way to get email notification on completion of a checklist? Not in this initial release. Uh, however, because we have it in the maintenance module, it would not surprise me that our developers could work some magic and have that at the end of a rig check that you can send an email like you send a requested maintenance to somebody. Okay, a couple more questions. Oh, Doug, excellent. Uh, he already tried it out. It looks like if two people are doing the same check, it will show that the other person has started it, but won't allow them to continue with it at the same time. So it doesn't look like you can do a rig check on, this, on the same vehicle at the same time, but certainly one could start it, leave it, and then the other person can come in and finish their part of the vehicle. 
And so remember here on the engine one history, all of the rig checks are be available. Oops, that's not what I wanted. This button, the history, everything about that vehicle is here. Uh, so the, we've got about six minutes, six or seven minutes. And Ryan, you're very welcome. Ready, this is a great place to go uh, when you're looking for reports. Instead of the reports module, click the reports button within the module you're in, in this case, maintenance, and it gives you a nice organized list of the uh, reports pertaining to that module. Okay, so the one I want to look at is where to go. I think it's down here. There we go. Percentage. This is a new report that pulls directly from rig checks. Percentage of rig checks passed or failed per apparatus. This is the first report that mines direct mines the data directly from rig checks. And so it gives me this. I can see for engine one, passed twice, failed 17 because we're in a demo account. And what that means by failed, it just means that there is one item, at least one item in the rig check that failed. And then it shows you when that happened, when it was completed, the checklist used, and who, who did the checking. So you have been doing a lot of demos where I at least fail one item. All right, and I've been just using exclusively engine one. Questions on that report? Yes, you're right, Doug. You can complete a rig check that was started by someone else, but I'm the one thing I'm not sure of is if you can both work in the same rig check at the same time and everything saves correctly. That's the only question that I don't want to say, I don't want to commit to without practicing it. So that you're right. Yeah, you can, you can, like I, like I showed earlier, you can start a check, leave it, and then someone else can come in and finish it for sure. That, that one I can say, because I was able to show it, I can say with 100% confidence on that. All right, so that's the first report that pulls from rig checks. And keep in mind, the other report that's not wasn't built for rig checks, but certainly can be can be um, used is this one. Go to Daybook. Again, this is one example. We can there's another one I'm going to show you here in a minute, um, and then we'll wrap this up for today. You guys have been great. So if I want to see, well, I could even do daily log items of apparatus, but let's say I want to see activity codes, and I want to see uh, hours spent for act daily log items for activity code for date range. Let's do this one. So for the month, rig checks, and I can even narrow that range down, but I just want to capture everything for this month. You can see a summary of all the rig checks in your organization, and then those with a little bit of Excel knowledge, click a text download, and you can filter by apparatus and have a beautiful summary of the rig checks. Um, th and when I say summary, it's not gonna give you everything, it's just gonna give you what failed, but who did it and when. And you can have a month's worth of rig checks and see what, you know, if we're having a repeating pattern on things, um, you know, the light bulbs, a uh, certain headlight keeps going out, or, you know, the we've got a low pressure in the braking system all the time, we've got a leak, things like that. So that that's one report, one last report, and then I'm gonna finish up with answering questions for you guys and we'll call it a day.